On today's show, we're talking about ProGrade, the new kids on the block for making the highest end SD and CF cards that money can buy. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash Photo Joseph. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, we're here talking live about things, photography, video, live streaming, and all sorts of related type of things. If you can watch the show live, you get to participate in the comments, the chit chat right here. We do a Q&A at the end of the show. If you have a question, make sure you put a, a Photo Joseph, like uh, Mr. Sean Mark Nipper just did there, in front of it. And then at the end, when we pull up the cues, we can uh, we can make sure that I get your questions answered. I see them because they've got my name on it, and I know it's a question to talk about. So today we are talking about something from a company called ProGrade. Now there's a little bit of interesting history here. You, if you're a regular to the show, you may have heard a little bit of this before. I had a longtime friend of mine, Jeff Cable, who is a photographer and used to be an executive at Lexar. He came on the show to talk about his photography with the Olympics and we have, uh, we'll link to that up here. We did that interview, it's quite a few months ago. It was, it was a lot of fun, saw some great images. Uh, he left Lexar a while ago and then some point after he left, Lexar had shut down their card division and some of the people from Lexar went, oh, this kind of sucks, and uh, got together with some other high-end industry folks and launched a company called ProGrade. The whole idea behind ProGrade is it is a professional memory card manufacturer. They do cards for the pro. This is not something you're going to find at Walmart. This is not the cheap cards to drop in your point and shoot. If you are a working pro, primarily for photography or video, but as you're going to find out with these higher-end cards, this is really targeted for the video market, this is one of the companies you're going to want to go with. There's only two manufacturers out there right now making really, really good high-end reliable cards that are truly rated to V90 and ProGrade is one of them. So let's talk about what these things are. So this particular card, let's get a little close up of this guy right here. This particular card, okay, first of all, it's a monster. 256 gigabytes. Um, as far as I know, this is the only 256 gigabyte V90 card on the market. And it's V90 because that is the speed, the V rating for video over 90, and it is just, it is phenomenally, phenomenally fast. While I've got a close-up here, I just want to show you something before I forget. There is a um, serial number embedded or etched, I should say, etched onto every single card, unique serial number, so that the company can track the card and knows when you call in exactly when it was, you know, if you ever have any problems, exactly when it was manufactured, what firmware it's got on it, and so on. So um, that's kind of awesome. I just wanted to show that while I had that on there. Um, so 256, that's big. V90, that's fast. Do you need it? Ooh. Probably not. Honestly, a lot of you out there shooting are not going to need something quite this fast, which is good because they're quite expensive. But if you need it, there is no question about it. This is what you want. So let's let's look at some bullet points here. I created some slides here to make this a little bit easier, make sure we get all the points up that we want to get up today, starting with uh, the pricing, because that is, after all, one of the most important points about this. So there's three cards, 64, 128, and 256. I've got all three of them here. And uh, Pricing is pretty much the same across per gigabyte. So the 64 gig is a $99, so I'll call it a $100 card. It's a buck 56 per gigabyte. The 128 drops a little bit per gigabyte, not really much. 189 for the card, $1.48 per gigabyte. And then the 256 is essentially identical price per gigabyte. 379.99 for the card, it's $1.48 again per gigabyte. Now that is a lot of money per gigabyte because these cards allow you to shoot at the highest bit rates the cameras are doing today, namely, the GH5 and GH5S and the EVA1 shooting at 400 megabit. If you are not shooting at 400 megabit, you can still use ProGrade cards. You can still buy ProGrade cards that are rated at V60, which will do everything else the camera does. It might even do the 400 megabit. Technically, it's within range to do the 400 megabit. It's right at the hairy edge. So you might have some issues, but you might not. It's one of those kind of gray areas. Uh, if you're not shooting critical stuff, you know, you might be able to get away with it. But the V60 cards are literally half the price. Every single one of these is half of that price. So if you don't need that 400 megabit, go for the less expensive card. But if you need that 400 megabit, chances are you're doing client work. Chances are the cost is not an issue. And there you go, and that's what you're gonna want. So what does this mean, 256 gigs? And I, I did this because I thought it was just kinda like, this is cool. So 256 gig card, UHS-2 is what this is, V90. This is in my Lumix GH5. I put it in there, reformatted the card, and I went through a few different camera settings. If you're shooting 4K 30p 400 megabit, that is the highest bit rate, highest quality you get out of the GH5 recording internally, you're gonna get an hour and 24 minutes of recording time. That's a lot of 400 megabit. But let's say you don't need 400 megabit. All right, uh, maybe you want something a little bit less. How about uh, 4K 60p, which is what I usually shoot at. If I'm doing not client work, I'm usually shooting 4K 60p. Three hours and 46 minutes. Uh, 
And then, if you want to take it down to uh, 30p 100 megabit, you have five hours and 46 five hours and 46 minutes on a single card. So that's that's a lot of storage. And obviously, those numbers are going to be the same if they're V60 or V90. We're talking storage here, not speed. So yeah, you're going to get a lot of capacity out of these things. And then then we get into copying this stuff off of the card. So they also make this ProGrade reader. Now, this particular one right here, this card right here, there you go, this is a dual reader. It does CFast, so the CF cards, oops, there we go, and SD, uh, SD cards, the UHS-2 reader is what it is. It is, if you look on the back, a USB-C reader. And it's not just that it's got a USB-C port on it, it is actually USB 3.1 Rev 2, which is a really stupid USB thing. So they did USB 3.0, and then they came out with USB 3.1, which was twice as fast, went from five gigabit to 10 gigabit. I'm pretty sure that's right. And, um, and we're talking theoretical maximums of the USB chain, right? And then at some point they decided that USB 3 to 3.1 was confusing, so they renamed it USB 3.1 Gen 1 and USB 3.1 Gen 2. Uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 is what you want, that's what this is. And when you have a card reader this fast, combined with a card this fast, oh, the copy times go insane. I sadly do not have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 laptop. I've got an older laptop. However, I did some tests and some footage that I shot this weekend with copying about 40 gigs of content off of the card using the internal card reader on my 2014 MacBook Pro and then using this guy plugged into it. And let's see what we get here. So let me pull these notes back up. There we go. So transfer speeds, 40.24 gigabytes from the 256 gig card UHS-2 V90 card. I'm using my MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch 2014. This is ancient. And this has USB 3.0, AKA 3.1 Gen 1. Yeah. Here's the copy speeds. Using the internal reader, that's the one that's built in. You know, remember back when they used to build the readers into the, yeah. Seven minutes, 24 seconds to copy 40 gigs. That's 0 0.09 gigabytes per second. I take this reader and plug it into this laptop and the speed is over two and a half times as fast. It goes to two minutes, 38 seconds, a quarter of a gigabyte per second. Not too shabby. Now, again, I don't have 3.1 to test. Obviously, the maximum speeds of what are claimed are theoretical, maximum, no one ever hits those speeds. But the claimed data speed, theoretical max, yada, yada, is 1.25 gigabytes per second. So another five times as fast. We're not going to get there. Even if it just doubles, even all you get is doubles, that would bring it down to, what, a minute and 20 seconds to copy 40 gigs off of the card. Huh, pretty good. And that's copying to the internal SSD on this machine. Um, again, if you have a latest and greatest MacBook Pro, it'll be even faster than that with USB 3.1, faster SSD drives, et cetera, et cetera. But that's what I'm getting today, which I think is relevant because not everybody out there is rocking the latest MacBook Pro. 2014 model, that's what you're getting off of there. So with that in mind, it is absolutely worth buying this. This reader is $80. It's not a huge expense. And the speed performance is significant. Another big deal about this reader is that it will read both cards simultaneously at full speeds. So if you are shooting a camera that has CF and SD, you can, or just multiple cameras, CF and SD, you can import both simultaneously. I have asked the company um, if they're gonna be a dual SD card version, cause like that's what I would like, and they just stared at me. So, you know, I'm sure it'll come at some point, right? That's one of those things. Um, it's pretty obvious, but this is what they got on the market right now. Um, and again, at 80 bucks, I think it's well worth it to have the, the faster speeds in there. When you buy that, by the way, you get two, let's get a close up on here again. You get two SD cables. So you get a USB-C to standard USB-A, um, I think that is adapter, and then USB-C to USB-C. So you've got both types of cables on there. The other really, really cool thing about this is how this attaches to your laptop. So check this thing out. Um, I don't, I haven't stuck this on yet. It comes with this. This is not just a little badge. This is actually a sticker. I'm not gonna peel it off right now because I need to put this on. It's a sticker, very thin magnetic sticker that you put on the back of your laptop and it magnetically attaches. So the idea is that we go and take this and I would stick this on, which is a nice little branding for ProGrade. Well done. Stick that on there and then whenever I wanna use this, I just magnetize that onto there and obviously the sticker is stuck on and away you go. Pretty cool, so that means you don't have to kind of be jumbling with this thing dongled hanging off of your, you know, you get it. Okay, so hey, um, real quick, I wanna tell you something, just remind you real quick about our value for value model we do here on the show. If you feel that you have learned or gained 
value from today's show, we would appreciate a little bit of value thrown back at us. If you go to photojoseph.com support, there's lots of different ways to put value back into the show, including membership of the site, which will give you access to things like the live training unlimited, as well as the business to the business of the business interviews of which we're doing number two tomorrow with my friend Kenneth Lim. So I'll give you unlimited access to all of that. And it's just a great way to help support the show. For this particular episode, I am going to give you another way to support it, which is to support yourselves as well. And that is a way to buy these cards and get 10% off. So we'll, we'll kick that off at the end there, show you that. Um, okay, a couple other points here. I had some notes on here, things I wanted to make sure that I told you about on this data, on these little points here. Um, quality. Okay, this is some information that I got from ProGrade themselves. I was asking them about the quality of these cards, because obviously when you're talking this price, this speed, this caliber, you kind of expect some quality to happen in there. And the guys that founded this, they went into this market with the explicit concern, the explicit intention of being the highest quality cards that money could buy. That's, this is what they want to do. So they told me a little story. They told me that in the industry of card manufacturing, there's a variety of testing that happens pre-manufacture, of course. And they, you know, once they develop their cards and they go, right, draw a line in the sand, this is how we're manufacturing their cards. And then they go off into production. Every card that comes off of the production line, standard industry practice, it gets tested. Every single card gets tested. It gets tested for about 45 seconds. At 45 seconds of testing, that's enough for the most part to tell you whether cards a pass or fail. It gets put in a packaging and off it goes. At that 45 seconds testing, there is about a 2% failure rate in the market, meaning about 2%, two out of every 100 cards or one out of every 50 card that you buy is going to fail. And, you know, it'll be replaced on a warranty, whatever, but, you know, that kind of sucks, right? You don't want that. ProGrade wants to approach, wants to have a 0% failure rate. And so what they're doing is every single card that comes off the production line, every single card, gets every single memory sector tested. Every single sector is written to and read back from, and that takes 45 minutes. Every card, every single card gets 45 minutes of testing instead of 45 seconds. That's fantastic. That really tells you when you get your card, this thing has not just been looked at cursorily, it is an actual proper test. This is part of why the cards cost what they do. They go through this extensive testing, but again, you get what you pay for. In this, end, in this type of the market, in this end of the market, this market, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, put your money where your mouth is, blah, 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 all that. You get what you pay for. It is definitely worth the cost on that. So another point I wanted to make out, uh, the serial number we talked about. Oh, and then finally, so support, tech support. If you ever have any issues, they wanted me to mention that their, their tech support people sit right across the street, across the hall from their engineers. So if there's any, ever any issues, they can communicate with them directly. As I told you already, every card has a serial number embed, embedded in ed, engraved, laser etched, that was the word, laser etched onto it so they know exactly what card you've got, what the firmware is, and so on. And if there's any problems, obviously they can do a swap out, they can do whatever it takes, and they will even, if you're in a tight production schedule, they will do a cross ship. So if you have a bad card or you have a problem with a card, you can ship it to them and they will cross ship a new card back to you as soon as you ship yours to them. So you could theoretically have it back within a day. So that's pretty awesome. Okay. So that's it. That's everything I wanted to tell you about this. So the last point that I wanted to show you on here was the wee little discount. So the fine folks over at ProGrade are offering you, my beautiful listeners and viewers, a code, a discount code of, called PhotoJoseph10. Just punch PhotoJoseph10 in on checkout to save 10%. This is valid through all of 2018. So that is, uh, that is kind of awesome. To get to that, go to photojoseph.com slash prograde, and they will uh, that is where you'll get that purchase, where, where you'll get that discount, and uh, yeah, save 10%. So pretty, pretty awesome. Thank you, prograde folks, very much for offering that up. Okay, um, oh, one last thing that I wanted to show you. Ha, the actual live demo portion of this, I almost forgot about. So if any of you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen over the weekend, I was out shooting a bit with this. I've, the GH5, I was shooting, this is... Um, I saw somebody in the beginning asking what this is. This is the Canon 50 millimeter f1.2 with the Pixco lens adapter. So I was talking about that. I think that was Monday's show last week, whatever. We'll link to that up here. Um, I did a show last week about this adapter. It's kind of a, um, kind of a poor man's uh, speed booster. And this red thing on top of it, on the front of it, I think it was Sean who asked, that's just a variable ND. I bought one with red, so it matched the red. It just kind of looked cool. Uh, anyway, so that's what this kit is. So I was shooting with this over the weekend, shooting at 400 megabit, which isn't something I really often do, but since I had the capability here, and obviously wanted to get some time testing these things, I was shooting at 400 megabit. Incidentally, I was shooting in HLG, which I've never done before. Um, I have not yet... Um, looked at the footage, we'll see if I got anything out of it, but I was out shooting with it. And here's what I wanted to show you. So let me make sure we're all set up here. Yes, we are. If you have ever worked with less than super, super fast cards, you know that when you're recording, 
Well, first of all, you could get dropouts. It's, it's possible that you'll get a thing that says, oh, card is not fast enough. And if you've tried to shoot 400 megabit on an inferior card, you'll, you've definitely seen that error before. Card is not fast enough, recording stops. But even on cards that should be fast enough, but are not actually properly designed, properly engineered, properly tested, you will have a very slow file closing. And the file closing is what happens when you stop recording. There's a final bit that has to happen. The, the, basically, the camera says, OK, we're done recording. It puts the closing bits onto the file, whatever it is the wrap closes the wrapper, if you will, writes that to the memory card, and then it's ready to start shooting again. If that closing takes time, that is time that you cannot be shooting, meaning you hit stop record, and you're going, <laughs> close now. OK, it's closed, and then you can start shooting it. I have had that experience with other cards. This card, if you follow me on Twitter, over the weekend, you saw that I tweeted something about how there was virtually zero closing delay. So this is what I wanted to show you. So we're going to go back into the close-up view here. Uh, let's see here. There we go. You can see the car. You can see the screen. All right, so I'm going to use the record button to start recording. You see it's recording right there. OK, I am going to, I'm going to get my microphone right up to you so you can hear me push the button. Stopped. Done. Ready to record again. Look at that. Okay, here I'm, I'm going to go three, two, one, zero, one, zero. I'm going to push stop. Three, two, one, zero. It's about a second and a half before I can start recording again, and off we go. That is what I found consistently throughout the weekend shooting 400 megabit. Wow, that was crazy impressive. That was my biggest concern was shooting 400 megabit was being able to actually start shooting again immediately, and no problems at all with that. So. That is everything I wanted to tell you about the ProGrade. Again, if you like what you see, you decide you want to buy one, head over to photojoseph.com slash ProGrade, use the PhotoJoseph 10 discount and uh, get 10% off of that card, and that will be valid through 2018. Of course, that's valid for the cards or for the readers or anything else you want on there. All right, guys, that's that. Let's jump into the Q&A show. If you have any questions about what you've seen here today or anything else you want to talk about, you know what to do. Put it into the questions in the live chat down below, and uh, make sure you put at PhotoJoseph in front of it so that I know, and uh, I know it's a question, and I'll bring it up. See you in a moment.